heat, transfer of heat, conductors and insulators. There are different ways in which heat transfers. If you pour hot water in a mug, even the mug becomes hot. If we hold a metallic spoon over a flame, after some time, the other end also heats up. The heat is travelling from one object to another in a certain way. This method of transfer of heat in solids is called conduction. How does conduction work? You know that each substance is made up of small particles called atoms. These atoms are very close to each other in solids. When we heat a solid at one end, the atoms that receive the heat start vibrating fast. As they vibrate, they pass on the vibration to the next atoms. How does conduction work? Conduction happens mainly in solids. All atoms vibrate, but they vibrate more when heated. Heat spreads by conduction when atoms increase their vibrations and pass this energy on to those nearby. The hot atoms do not move to the other end of the solid. They stay in their place. They only pass on their energy to their neighbours. The substance through which conduction takes place is called medium. You can see conduction at work. Take an iron rod, clean it with a cloth and stick blobs of wax onto it at small intervals, about 1 or 2 centimeters. Fix a small nail in each blob of wax. Hold one end with a cloth and hold the other end over a candle flame. Soon you will see that the nails start falling off one by one. The nail closest to the fire falls off first, then the one after that and then the one after that. Do you know the reason why? That is because heat is travelling through the rod by conduction. The particles of iron closest to the fire got heat first. Then they passed it to the ones next to them and so on. So the particles get heated in a line. That is why the wax closest to the fire melted first and the nail fell off first. What would happen if you hadn't held the rod with a cloth? As the whole rod heated up, your fingers would be burned too. So it is a very good idea to hold the rod with a cloth. Do you think conduction works the same everywhere? Conduction takes place at different speeds in different substances. Heat travels faster in some substances than in others. Materials in which heat travels fast are called good conductors of heat. Metals are good conductors of heat. That is why Cooking utensils are made of metal. They heat up fast on the fire and transfer the heat to the food inside to be cooked. And because of conduction, the whole utensil becomes hot though we are heating only the bottom surface of the utensil. 
if there are good conductors, there must be bad conductors too. Materials in which heat travels very slowly are called bad conductors of heat. Glass, paper, wood, plastic are all bad conductors of heat. That is why the handles of cooking vessels are made up of these materials. They do not heat up even if the vessel does and this makes it possible for us to hold them. What did we just learn? Heat flows through solids by conduction. The particles of the solid substance that are closest to the source of heat get heated themselves and start vibrating. They pass the heat to their neighboring particles and those particles then pass the heat to their neighbors until the whole substance gets heated. If there are more particles packed close to each other, speed of conduction is higher. The particles only vibrate in place during conduction. They do not leave their original place. Materials through which heat can travel quickly by conduction are called good conductors of heat. Most metals like iron, copper, aluminium, etc. are good conductors of heat. Substances like glass, wood, paper, mica, etc. are bad conductors of heat. We know how heat spreads in solids. Now let us see how heat spreads in liquids. In a beaker, take a little water and start heating it. Before the water boils, pour a few drops of ink in the water. Observe how the ink is spreading. You will notice that colored water rises from the bottom of the beaker and then comes down again. The water at the bottom of the beaker heats up and rises. As it rises, the cold water in the surrounding moves in to take its place. Then that too heats up and rises. This is called a convection current. The current keeps on circulating till the entire body of water heats up uniformly. This is how heat gets transferred in liquids and gases. It is known as convection. In convection, the particles that are heated actually move to another location and new particles come to the heat source and get heated. It is important that you understand why the hot water rises. When water is heated, it expands. When it expands, the density of water reduces, which means it becomes lighter. The lighter water rises and the cooler water is heavier and so sinks. This is what sets up the convection current. If you want to cool all the air in the room, should the air conditioner be near the floor or the ceiling? An air conditioner sends out cool air. Cool air is heavier than warm air. And so it sinks. It will come to the bottom of the room. The hot air will be at the top of the room. The cool air that it ejects will keep coming out and settling at the bottom of the room. So, the air conditioner should be near the ceiling so that it gets hot air to suck in and cool down all the time. If you want to heat all the air in the room, should the heater be near the floor or the ceiling? 
a heater sends out warm air. Warm air is lighter than cool air and so it rises. It will come to the top of the room. The cool air will be at the bottom of the room. The hot air that it ejects will keep coming out and settling at the top of the room. So the heater should be near the floor so that it will get cool air to suck in and warm up all the time. Why do you think there are holes at the bottom of a lantern? A lantern needs air to keep burning. The hot air rises from the top and leaves the lantern. The holes at the bottom allow the cool air to come into the lantern. This sets up a convection current for the air. In summer, when you swim in a pool, you will find the upper layers of water warm and the lower layers cool. Is this because of convection currents? No. Convection currents transmit heat in the upward direction. Then, why is the upper layer warm? That is because they get heated by the sun. The source of heat is from the top, not the bottom. Convection occurs in gases and liquids, that is fluids. Hot fluids rise, cold fluids fall. The whole fluid rises in temperature due to the mixing caused by the convection currents. What did we just learn? Heat flows through liquids and gases by convection. The particles of the fluid substance that are closest to the source of heat get heated themselves and rise to the top. The neighboring cold particles slide in and come close to the source of heat. They get heated and rise too. As this happens, a convection current is set up. As the process continues, the whole fluid gets heated. In convection, the particles of the medium leave their place and become part of the convection and current. Convection needs a medium just like conduction needs a medium. The sun is so far away from us, still we feel its heat. There is no solid, liquid or gas that would transmit the heat from the sun to the earth. Between the sun and the earth, there is just the vast emptiness of space. There, just how does the heat from the sun reach the earth? It is through a process known as radiation. With radiation, energy can travel through vacuum as well. It travels at the speed of light in straight lines. Can you understand the different ways heat is being transmitted now? Land is a better conductor of heat than water is. So, during the day, land gets heated by the sun much quicker than water does. So the air above land is hotter than the air over water. When the air is hotter, the particles vibrate more and move away from each other. So the pressure of air on land becomes lesser. Wind blows from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. So how will the wind blow? from the sea to the land. That is called a sea breeze since it comes from the sea. At night, land cools down faster than water. So the water is warm and the land is cool. At night, the air pressure on land is higher than air pressure on water. So wind blows from land to water. This wind is called a land breeze since it comes from the land. Sea and land breeze. Thus, in the day, in areas near the ocean, we have sea breezes, while in the evening, we have land breezes. What did we just learn? Radiation is a method of heat transfer that does not need a medium Heat from radiation travels at the speed of light and in straight lines. 
It is due to radiation that the earth receives heat from the sun. 